best lift our two hands to heaven. Just stuck in the Holy Ghost. Just lift the voice, stuck in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
you are our friend. It's another year. It's another year. We are about to go again. This is our confidence that we have you. You are higher than our mind in dreams. We can plan in our own little way. But you have the big picture. You have the big thing you want to do for us. We don't want to do this here in the flesh. We don't want to do this here by our strength. It's a, it's a long year. And we know a lot will happen. But we ask Lord that one constant thing will be that we always know what to do by your spirit. And that's what we're trusting you for. Thank you for the many, many victories you're going to record this year. Thank you for the many testimonies. Thank you for the many losses the devil will have this year. Thank you for all the amazing things you will do. Thank you for the many shouts of victory. For the many growth that will happen. Thank you, Father, for the, many, for the strength you will give throughout this year. Thank you, Father, because by that we summarize the year and the end, we will say that you will honor. Thank you. We trust you. All that you will do for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's be seated. Hallelujah. So I believe this might be power a little. Happy New Year. I'm, I'm saying for the first time. I welcome you to a New Year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Some of us are still in last year, but, or maybe it's still with Christmas chicken. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I, I'm still proving my point. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do some joy in the Holy Ghost. Stand your feet. Let's do some rejoice in the Holy Ghost. If you are listening, don't have Stand your feet. Welcome. Let's try again. Stand where you are. Let's laugh here. Let's the Holy Ghost. Laugh. It's a brand new year. And um, if you know, we we did not we don't plan to start. We've started. From 31st night we started. How many of you are here on 31st? Night? Or you followed the service well at any time. Hallelujah. It was a powerful night. You know, that teaching that night, you need to get it and listen to it again and again and again and again. Hallelujah. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. This morning, um, I'll just start a teaching today and finish it on Thursday. So the service will start today. It will continue on Thursday. Then Friday is a mashup. <laughs> Don't miss that meeting. Don't have a habit of just being in church on Sundays. When there are special meetings like that, you make sure you are there. There are things you take vacation for that. I think you sort of things you take, you can take leave from work just to be in such meetings. And the mansion is one of those meetings. And most importantly for the time it's coming, it's the beginning of the year. It will set you for the year. It will set the right tone for the year. Amen. So you should be around. But then I'll just start teaching this morning. I titled it Recognizing the Voice of God. Amen. I'm going to teach you in the simplest way how to hear from God. Amen. The same, all this God told me, God told me, I'm going to teach you in the simplest way. Every believer is supposed to hear from God. Every believer. If not, you know that reason. Because God is your father. You're supposed to hear from him. And I dare add that every believer 
He has from God. Just that we don't know how to recognize. Sometimes I used to tell my friends, I don't need to teach a believer how to hear from God. I think we need to teach a believer how to recognize the voice of God. You don't teach his child how to hear from the father. But the child must learn to recognize that this is my father talking. There are one, there are thousands or millions of voices on the earth. And you must be able to know that this is God. Just like on earth, there are many, many, many people that have different, many guys that can talk. But if you learn to recognize your father's voice, even when they blind you and your father talks, he, like if your father wears a mask right now, covers his face, and maybe there are 20 mask rays, once he talks, he says, Daddy, why are you covering your face? You've learned how to hear his voice. We must learn how to recognize the voice of his face. And listen, this is one of the most important things every believer must learn. If not, you are going to live your Christian life like a confused person. And it's better you begin to learn it. You know, sometimes when I'm on stage here, I say things like, oh, there is someone here, and then it's correct. And many of you think that that is all I need that particular ability for. Well, that's not what I need it for. That's only the secondary thing. The primary reason I need to be able to hear from God is for my own life. I get to the point. It's for direction. It's to be able to know what to do. Because when you do not hear from God over any situation, you are just living in trial and error. The believer is not supposed to live his life by trial and error. If not for any other thing, he has God that knows the end from the beginning. I get to the point. We, we call God omniscient. Omniscient means he knows everything. So he knows even what the devil is planning tomorrow. And so you must master how to hear from God. And most importantly because for a good number of us, we are at a point in our lives where we are making critical life-changing decisions. Are you following me? We are choosing the city to reside. We are choosing who to marry. We are choosing what to do. We are choosing a career path. But that's the point where many people are. And because of that, you need to be able to know how to hear from God. And even in your everyday life, you should be able to master how to know that this is God talking to me and this is not God talking to me. And you better learn it now and even practice it with simple things. Because I always say something jokingly, but it is true. Many people don't, they don't learn early how to recognize God's voice talking to them. But they suddenly want to hear from God when they want to make a very important decision. For instance, when marriage comes, that sister that has never heard from God, even over any simple thing, now wants to hear from God for who she will marry. How will that even work? I get to the point. How will he even know that it is God talking to you? You've never heard from him. You've never asked him anything. You don't even know how he speaks. And suddenly he says, God told me to marry. Who which God told you? Next, by Thursday, and let me even say this. Don't miss Thursday services this year. No serious Christian goes to church once every week. Right? And never forget it. No matter your excuse. No serious Christian goes to church once every week. Nobody. You are not going to grow and become solid like that. And if you are in this church, you should know that the most important teachings come on Thursdays. I hope you know. Because Sunday is for everybody. Thursdays, so on Thursday, I'll continue this teaching. I will, I will narrow down a little on Thursday on visions and revelations. Visions, revelations, and all that. The last time I thought on that was 2017. So I'm going to reload it again. Visions and revelations. You need to know how to hear from God. You need to know how to see visions. All this they say, ah, I saw a vision. It's not special for any kind of Christian. It's not special for pastors. You just need to know how these things function. Are you here? Jeremiah chapter 30. Everybody must learn how to hear from God. Sorry, chapter 10 rather. Jeremiah 10 verse 23. Jeremiah 10 verse 23. You need to master how God speaks and know how to hear him. How to clearly say this is God talking to me. He said, oh Lord, I know that 
the way I know that the way of man is not in himself. I read this scripture for you all the time. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Jeremiah is saying, if you die, if you decide as a man to direct your step by your step by yourself, you make mistakes. It is not a man. It's not a man. NLT said, we are not able to plan our own course. So it's not a man to determine, well, I'm going to go here. Because we will always, we don't even know what tomorrow looks like. The book of James tells us, you that is saying, tomorrow I will go to this city and do this and do that. He said, how do you even know what happened tomorrow? Who is following me this, this morning? How do, you know, how do you know that this will not happen tomorrow? But then we just plan our lives by our own selves and then we expect that things will suddenly work. And then we complain when they don't. God wants to talk to you. And I'll, I'll tell you, God wants to talk to you more than you even want to listen to him. When you begin to, when you learn to hear the voice of God, it solves a lot of problems. One of the issues it brings for you, one of the problems it solves for you, for instance, it solves the issue of deliverance and protection. Following God's voice and hearing his voice is one of the easiest ways to stay safe. Because when there is a danger, he will show you. And let me say this to you. There has never been a time when there is a danger when the Holy Ghost will not show you. The question is whether you will know he's talking, whether you will recognize the voice, and whether you will follow. Are you in church this morning? You know the story of, of well, of course, I, I shared this story on Christmas Day. When, when they gave birth to Jesus, Mark chapter 2. Herod already had planned, I'm going to destroy this guy. We see the voice of God play major roles. First, he went to the shepherds and told them, don't go back to Herod. He used that divine leading to keep Jesus safe. Don't go back to Herod. He went to Joseph and Mary and said, run with the child. That is... That, that tells you that God is always ahead of the devil. And if you will learn to always hear him, he will always keep us safe ahead of the devil. Amen. Let me say, let me say this to you. Do you know that by the time God was telling them to carry Jesus and run, Herod had not even known that he was going to ask every two-year-old child to be killed. So before it even got into the heart of Herod to do evil, God already planned the way of escape. And the only way you were able to pick it is by divinely it, by listening to God. And so when you form, one of the things you must try to do this year, part of the habits you form this year is, I want to master how to hear from God. I want to be able to follow him. To know when he talks, to know when to follow him. It's, it's something you learn. Why are you learning it? I'll tell you why you learn it. You learn it just like a child. When a child is born, over time, the child learns to recognize that this is my father talking. At first, he may not be able to know. But progressively, even from father, you know, children recognize to the point that they can tell the horn of their father's car. Amen. Many other cars will just pass our horn and say, that's not that deep. Especially when they are committing evil. Maybe they are in the pool watching TV. In Delhi, they hear that horn. Say, not. In Delhi, there is a particular horn they will hear. Everybody will start reading. Run to your room with the arrangers, pick your book, and stay very serious. How they are able to do that? They have learned over time. Over time, that this is how that they used to run. You must learn how to hear from God. So it keeps you safe. I've also explained to you, it brings prosperity. It brings increase. You want to make any investment this year? Hear from God. Now, let me tell you, don't be a, don't live like the world. Don't live like, don't just make your plans like the world. If you make your plans like the world, you follow, you follow trial and error. You follow, um, you study the market and all that. That is good though. But beyond that, hear from God. Genesis 26 verse 1. I, I always read that story. And I, li I like reading it and contrasting it with Ruth. I'm coming to that. So in Genesis 26 verse 1, there was a famine. 
and Isaac had planned well, let me run away. God told him, don't go anywhere. Stay back in this land. So when he obeyed the voice of God and stayed back in the land, God told him to stay. He brought prosperity. The Bible tells us the man became so rich that the Philistines began to envy him. Just because God said stay. Another person would have stayed, just stay because Isaac is staying. And the person would run into trouble. Because the logical thing to do when there is a famine is to run away. Just like I've kept telling you, for instance, in, this, in Nigeria now, everybody wants to run away from Nigeria because Nigeria is passing through tough times. And if you want to run away, I have no problem with that. I hope you know that. I hope you know. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with that. I only have a problem with if that is not what God wants for you. You're going to run into trouble. The safest place I've always told you and the richest place, the wealthiest place, is the center of God's will for your life. If you are there, you'll be rich. If you are there, you'll be safe. And let me say, let me say something to you about, about God's living. When God leads you to stay in a place, I don't know if I have time to talk about divine geography this morning. When God leads you to stay in a place, he makes a holistic plan for you. What I mean by that is, if you follow your own wisdom and follow your own leading, you might get one or two things right. For instance, you can decide, I'm going to leave Enugu and go to Ebony or wherever. Because there is a well-paying job there. You might get there and actually get the well-paying job. I get to the point. But in the process, other areas may suffer. You might now find a relationship, you might now find yourself meeting one or two demons in that place who will ruin your life. Do you understand? Your relationship may suffer, your spiritual life may suffer, safety becomes an issue from one problem to another. That's not God's plan. God's plan is to keep you in a place where you are rich, where you are safe, where your relationships are fine, where everything, his plans, he makes holistic plans such that he takes every area of your life into consideration before he makes the plan. That's why when he talks to you, you listen. Because you know why it's good to follow God? When you are sure he's leading you. When you come into a place and God led you to the place. When something is wrong, you can hold him responsible. Thank you to the point. You can talk to him. That he said I should come here. So what's up? What's happening? And, and you, that's why he's not a man to direct himself. So you see, you see Isaac, there was a famine. And the Lord told him, stay back in that land. And he stayed back, and the Lord blessed him. Look at verse 12. Isaac stood in that land and received it in the same year. And hundredfold. What the important thing is, two important words here. In that land, in the same year. Two important. When he says in that land, he's trying to remind you, that same land where there was famine, that was not producing. When he says in the same year, he's trying to remind you, it is in that same year of famine. Are you following me? What, what we, you know, sometimes we pray. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We pray and we say, well, I prayed and I waited and I didn't see the answer. Most times, why it looks like we didn't see the answer is that the answers to your prayer are in divine leading. Don't forget what I said. If God says, I am going to give you, give me an example. What did you pray for? Talk, talk. What did you pray for? A house. God says, I'm going to give you a house. You pray that you receive the house in prayer. Now, there are many ways that house can come. That house can come by you closing a very massive business deal. And then you go pay for the house. Do you understand? Now, let's work with that. We'll work with the rest later. That business deal might come by one person you have to meet. And if you do not hear God, do not follow his leading, you might just miss that person. And I begin to complain, oh, God does not answer prayer. I give another example. Another way that house can come might be God just bringing you into a certain property that people want to give, a, give at a giveaway price. I get to the point. Maybe a house that's supposed to be 40 million, somebody just wants to sell it for 
for eight million for some reason. He just wants to run away from the country. So he wants to sell everything he has and leave. So he begins to go up against the righteous step. The Bible tells us he utters the footsteps of the righteous. So he begins to tell you, well, you go here, you go here. If you listen to him, you run into that man. They say, oh, that was just coincidence. It's not coincidence. But then you do not listen to, the, to him. You miss the man. Sometimes you don't know that in not paying attention to simple, simple leadings that God puts in your heart. Okay? You have missed out on so many prayers you have prayed. Are you following me? Are you following me? You know, some of you, some prayers you prayed five, six years ago, God answered with you joining church. You get the point? Now, when you are joining church, it might just be a simple in your heart. Just, let me just join this and become serious. What you did not realize is that when you are about to join, you are coming into the answer to about 15 prayer points. Are you following me this morning? That's how, that's how answers come. So if you had missed that single leading of join this church, you would have missed out of 15. And I said, where are the prayers that we prayed? Where are they? Some of you have the answer came is that you come, you came into church and then Pastor began to teach and began to show you how to exercise your faith. That answer to your prayer. You now went back and exercised the faith and then you had your answers. You would not have had those answers if you didn't know how to exercise your faith. So you need to realize that how God leads or how God answers prayer most times is in his leading. You see, so Isaac went to that land and he had a hundredfold. Contrast it with Ruth, the book of Ruth. A man called Elimelech. There was, was he Elimelech? Is that his name? Yeah, Elimelech, yes. There was famine in the line, land. What did he do? He ran away. Without hearing from God. Ran away with his wife, Naomi, with his two children, Malon and Chilon. They ran into a land where there was plenty. At least the jackal. In that land, Elimelech lost his life. Elimelech lost Malon. Elimelech lost Chilon. So Naomi was just alone. Guess what God led her to do? To go back to the land where she was coming from. So that loss was unnecessary. That loss could have been avoided. I follow me, George. You know, that's why don't live your life by trial and error. The consequences can be too much. You might recover, but you might have lost a lot of things. Can be too much. Leading, leading. What I'm sharing with you is what many, even some unbelievers, all these, top, all these guys that are very well. Why do you think you go to some native doctors' houses and go to some of these prophets. You find wealthy people there. What are they looking for? Direction. See for me. What should I do? Should I put my money here? Because they know that life doesn't work like that. A man I know, I'm telling you a real life story, he joined a, a big court. All these courts that used to make people have money some years ago. And so before he joined the court, he had already planned to do a certain business. He has, the person that told us the story is the son. The son is grown now. He told us the son about the father. He was showing us, look at all these properties. My dad bought it many years ago to use to, because the father has died. But he knew the father was not pure. He bought it to use to start a certain business. But when he joined this school, they told him, this business you're about to start cannot make, make you rich. So abandon everything you bought. Start this other business. And he did Till today, those things are still packed in their house doing nothing. But they are very wealthy. Because they eventually went to do that business and he began to do well. Now, some other person will say, oh, well, this business is paying and then he jumps into it and he crashes. So, what you call, let, let me say this to you, no matter the success you think you have now, it is nothing compared to what God wants to give you. And what God wants to give you, he will show you when you let you listen to him. Sometimes we say, I don't need God. You say, why? I have everything I need. What is everything you need? You have two million. 
You've not seen life. He said, you are balling, you are balling. How much are you balling with? 3.2 million. That's balling. And so, you know, you know that's the foolishness. Ah, all this, uh, all this church people. Did they go church? I see their money pass them. Well, you are not sure. You know, it's not people that spend money that have money. And so, let's leave that. I've met some kind of people. It's when you start talking with them. You now realize... These boys. You know that people, different things are built to people. There are people, they spend money on their clothes. Others spend money on shoes. Others spend money on cars. Others spend money on houses. So some people, you may not know they have, know they have money until you meet some part. Some people spend money on nothing. Now, don't be like that. Have something at least that you should spend money So I'm spending on, if they will have money, you will not know. The guy sitting with you has about 180 million naira sitting in his account. He's wearing a normal shoe. He's even driving a normal car. Pencil lights, 2.2. He's just there, smiling with you. See, I can say this economy is hard. <laughs> I see the guy just living. You know, people are just different. So most times when you feel you are satisfied with where you are, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. There is a lot more that God wants to do for you if you can listen to him. A lot more. So, that is productivity, that is all of that. And I want to assure your hearts this morning that God has promised again and again that he will guide you if you can listen to him. You know, in Psalm 32 and verse 8, God has promised again and again that he will guide you. He said, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. It's a promise that God has made. So that you can begin to decide to hear him. Because he has promised that he will guide you. In Psalm 37 and verse 23. Psalm 37 verse 23. Very quickly. We're going to read 23 and 24. He said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. Verse 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. We see that? So a man can fall and not be cast down utterly because his steps are ordered by the Lord. When your steps are ordered by the Lord, even when you fall, what will happen? The Lord will uphold you with his hand. Because he's the one that led you into that path. I don't get the point. He led you into that path. One of the reasons he's talking about church all the time, I talk about, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm bold enough to talk to God about anything about this church. Once he's want to go down, I can talk to him and say, Father, he, was, he, he led me, he told me to be here. That's why I told you guys, some of you that were in the retreat I had recently, God does not join things. You can't start something and they invite God to come and join it. He starts. He wants, to, he wants you to start. You can't start your relationship and tell God, Father, I just started a relationship. Come and help me. Which relationship? You might have to end it. You will still learn. You can't start a walk now. You're just like, let me start a minute. You can't say, Father, come and help us. Help you do what? What exactly? So I was so sure my greatest challenge when I wanted to start the PG was, is God leading us. I had to run the church again and again and again. I wanted to be sure. And let me tell you, be sure. So I feel that why in the retreat, I was just, not in the church retreat, it's Champions Foundation retreat. You heard the story, some stories I told you guys. Some of the decisions we made this year, I prayed over them for two to three years. You remember I told you? Two to three years. And I, you know why? If you want to take 200 years to be sure that this is God's leading, please find out. Because where he leads, even if you sleep, he will uphold you. Because he sent you. Amen. So God wants to lead you, has promised to lead you. Of course, the popular Isaiah 30 verse 21, I like that scripture a lot. When talking about divine leading, Isaiah 30 and verse 21, he said, Thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right, and when you turn to the left. It's a promise God is making. That every time you turn to the right and turn to the left, your ear will hear a voice saying, This is the way. This is the way. So there is a promise of guidance. Let me run through this. You know, let me say a few things. One, that, that I, let me tell you how God does not lead, how he doesn't speak. What God's voice is not. What's God, what God's leading is not. 
why yeah. God does not lead or speak to you through circumstances. Please write it and don't forget it. God does not speak to you through circumstances. So you cannot say, how do you know God is leading you to do this? He said, because on that day I woke up and I was feeling very this. You can't use whatever. Or how I knew that God wanted me to do that was because that morning, when I said I wanted to do this, everybody was even supporting me. Everybody was telling me, it's right, it's right. I just knew that that was God. You can never be too sure. Satan can fill all their hearts. You get the point. You know it happened in the Bible. A king wanted to go to war. About 400 prophets, all of them kept telling him, you will win, you will win. Until they called one dangerous prophet. What's the name again? Can I remember? Huh? Ma Micaiah, something like that. He just got there and told the king, Whoa, you will win. The king says, Ah, tell me the truth. The way he said it sarcastically. He said, Let me tell you. I saw where. <laughs> he said, A demon decided that he was going to get into the mind of all these prophets and make, give them a lying tongue to lie to you. If you go to this battle, you will not come back. So they caught him and put him in prison. Of course, he was there when the king died. <laughs> you know, uh, you look at a man like David. The man fought. You know, I was, was, it was, that I was talking about this. The man fought throughout his life. He lost no single battle. If you know what that means in those days. He fought from his youth till an old. He lost not one battle. Do you know why? Before he goes on a battle, check, I think the first time chapter 30, they came and abducted his whole household. When he arrived, the, the normal thing to do is, guys, gather, let's pursue. He told them, wait. Bible said, everybody there, the people that were left, we are threatening to stone him. You are a bad leader, you are a bad leader. He told them, wait. He just turned to the Lord. Shall I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover? He need to hear that's the secret of the man's battle. Don't always do what is what everybody expects you to do. Listen to God. And that God's leading is not in circumstances. You can't find it by saying, since this happened and that happened. It means, how do you know that God wants you to start a ministry? In the light came into town, a man just met me and gave me land. That's not anything. I went to preach somewhere. I mean, we took as far back as 2008. That was an embrace date. I mean, 2008, when I'm talking about 2008, I just finished my I just finished my I was young. And these people met me after I finished preaching. They said, Ah, where are you? I said, I'm in Enugu State. What are you doing in Enugu State? No, Suka. You're wasting your time there. He said, Come here. I'm going to get a hall for you. 2008, small boy. I'm going to get a hall for you. This gift you have, if you come to this town, everybody will run back. I say, it's fine. Let me go first and meet my mom. <laughs> what do I know? Small boy. People would have said, oh, that's God's, that's, that's God. It's a confirmation. What's confirmation? It's not anything. Finally, I went to preach. I think I went to that meeting. Somewhere, you know, I went to preach and we had amazing meetings. We had an amazing meeting. Like, that was, that was, that was, that was a blind man. You remember? Yes, I had a blind man that saw. We had a man that crazy miracles. And the pastor met me after the service. He said, amazing. Made me some offers. Come and pastor with us. We'll give you a branch. We'll give you a house. We'll give you a car. I just, I was a final year. Just, I, I, I don't think I've written my degree exam then. A house, a car, and all that. Just pastor with us. Now, you can't use those things to know that God is leading you. Whether the circumstances are good, or whether they are bad, they're not a proof of anything. Now, listen to this. God can speak to you in the circumstance, but not with it. So, when you're having tough times, tough times does not mean that God is not leading you. But while you're having tough times, God can begin to talk to you in the tough time. I get what I'm saying. He will, it's, not, it's not the tough time. You can't say because there are tough times, it means God doesn't want it. 
Or because there are good times, it means God wants it. Amen. Amen. My pastor was going to, when, before he came to Lagos, the first time he attempted to come to Lagos to start a ministry, he came, they came, they did a meeting. The meeting was so amazing, so amazing, and they received a gift. Guess the gift they received? It was a land. No, I mean, a land with a car. They landed the property, I'm not mistaken. And when they finished and they were going, the Lord said, it's not yet time for Lagos, go back. You can't use supernatural provision to prove that God is leading you to do anything. I showed you guys, God led Jesus. Jesus was one man that flowed divine leading fully. Yes, look at his life. From one problem to another. And finally ended up on the cross. Jesus, are you sure you are following God? You just go to the cross. But like, like I always tell you, with God, the end is fine. No matter what happens. You know, following God does not mean that there will be no tough times. Following God means that no matter what the devil does, you will win. So, God does not speak to us through circumstances. I tell you what God's leading is not also. It's not superstition. It's not superstition. Many people, what they call God spoke to me is that I just been to superstitious. How do you know that that rat that entered your house is witchcraft? How who told you? Who's a superstitious person? Who told you the rat is, is, is a witch? Innocent rat. Now, don't get this twisted. Can witches come as rats? Uh, they can. I will tell you personally. You don't believe it. Don't worry. Life will teach you. Witches can come as beds. But you can't be that superstitious. How to know that this is it or that? It's not you know what superstition is? One big definition I love for superstition is people who have an unnecessary fear of the devil. That's superstition. Paul met them in Acts 17 verse 22. He told the man of Athens, I perceive that you are too superstitious. He told them. What they were doing, we have the unknown God. See, you guys are too superstitious. That's not God's leading. I was walking along the road and I hit my left leg on the stone. What does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. You are not looking. See, that's what it means. He said, if your left eye is twitching, have you heard that? What does it mean? That you want to cry? <laughs> or your right eye is twitching. What does it mean? Something good is coming. Sometimes just sleep. Yeah, just sleep. You see, if you wear the back of your clothes, somebody's about to touch your money. Now you remember all the times you wear the back of your clothes? That's why you just deliberately wear the back of your clothes. That's super, you can't use that. A believer can only live his life by that. that that's that's superstition. That's trial and error. That's not how God speaks. God will not speak to you through superstition. So it's not circumstance. It's not superstition. I just say two more things. God doesn't speak through negative emotions. Things like fear. Things like worry. So how do you know God doesn't want, God doesn't want to do that? I was just so afraid. For all you care, that could be the devil. The Bible said God has not given us the spirit of fear. And when he says God has not given us, God cannot speak to you through something he doesn't give you. Are you following me? You can't use worry to know. Because, for instance, if I've ever launched, have you ever done any new project in your life? There is always tension. Whether God is leading you or not. Have you observed, have you observed that? You always, there is always this doubt. Yeah, am I sure? Always that tension. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean God is leading you. It doesn't mean he's not. So when you talk about hearing from God, what people say they heard from God, sometimes it's just superstition. It's just superstition. Most times it's fear. They heard from fear, not from God. Sometimes it's worry. Sometimes it's guilt they are hearing from. You know, you can hear from guilt. Guilt can talk to you. Guilt can talk to you. Like somebody, he said, ah, you know, God spoke to me to do this, and I didn't do it. So God now said to me, 
that because of that, he will never speak to me again. That's guilt talking to you. That's guilt. So you can't use negative emotions to know. I want to say one more thing before I just proceed and explain the voice of God a little. Then we close today. The, the, what the voice of God does not speak to you always with spectacular happenings. Please learn this. I will address this more next week. When we hear voice of God, God talking to you, what we all are expecting is when pastor says, God spoke to me, that is somebody else that is, you were expecting that the way I heard it was, hey, son, don't you all right? And I said, Lord, what is that? You know, that's what we think God's voice is. God is not always spectacular. In fact, God is rarely ever spectacular. And when he's spectacular, he's trying to point your attention to something. God is always simple. What we want to understand as voice of God is because we want me to teach you how to just be in your room and just hear footsteps. Boom, boom, boom. And they just say, that. Say, sit down, let's talk. Say, my son, now that can happen. And let me even tell you something. Before you are done with your Christian life, you are going to have that experience at least once. Trust me. Just continue with God. Don't force it. Don't pray for it. It will come. One day you are going to have one spectacular experience. But then it's an exception. That's not how God talks. God is not always spectacular. One of the guys that had the most spectacular experiences is Brother Hagin. He will sit in, sit in his room and Jesus will walk into his room physically and talk with him. Get his book, I Believe in Visions. Very powerful material. So that happened, but he said the last time, after about four or five times, the last time it happened, Jesus told him, this will be the last time I will appear to you this way. I asked him why. He said, because I want to talk to you the same way I talk to every other of my children through their spirit man. Are you getting me? If God speaks to you spectacularly all the time, it means he cannot speak to you except you alone. Imagine how God talks to you is a loud voice. So imagine you are writing your exam and God wants to talk to you. And while, or maybe the lecturer is teaching in class. While I'm trying to concentrate, you are hearing, um, Udochuku, I want you to go and, you know, <laughs> concentrate. That is, this guy is not saved. I want you to go and preach to him. And you're saying, yes, Lord. Eh, hey, look, your lecturer, this man, why is your lecturer is teaching? You get confused, person. That's not how God talks. And that's what we think God's leading is. Or imagine God shows you things with your physical eyes every day. So your lecturer is teaching in the class. You are watching film. <laughs> He's just showing you screen in front of you. Things are happening. Let your eyes teach him. He say, are you following? You are lost. You are just watching. That's not how God talks to you. You know, God, you know, the way it is, eh? I can be doing something on this stage. And God is talking to me about somebody now. It happens all the time. I can be driving. And God is talking to me about what will happen in church. Imagine if God speaks spectacularly all the time. So I'm driving, he's showing me a vision with my physical eyes. I'm no longer seeing car. I am see, I'm watching film. I end up in the hospital. You know, just, I'm just driving, talking with my family. Maybe you're not just sitting with your family as a father. Try to have a good time with your children. And every time God will just interrupt. Hey, hey, I want to talk to you. My son! My son. He said, Can you hear that? He said, No, we can't. He said, My son, this your child will be great. This one, no God shouting into your ear like that. <laughs> you, you, you just that is the proof of madness. What else is madness? Anybody that has many voices speaking to him at the same time in his head. He's a man by just walking up and down. Something is telling him this does be is a five-star hotel. You can just lie down. The voice, <laughs> he sees bread. He says, wow, welcome to crunches. He sees bread in those bin. So he begins, he does have to be a fat person. <laughs> so he just eating the bread. He's looking at you like you are mad. How can I not be eating this bread that I'm eating? <laughs> so that, that's not how God leads us. Don't, you know, when we talk about leading of God, don't always expect that 
I went past his don't teach I was just walking along the road. Now I'll be hearing. No, that's not how God talks. It will happen to you once in a while. It has happened to me once in a while. But I can tell you, most important decisions that I've made in my life, that's not how I made it. That's not. Nobody should fool you. Because I know that that prophets can try to be spectacular and they can try to make you. Is I'm hearing in my left ear. No, that's not true. That's not true. I've heard such things. And I hear the Lord in my right ear. How did you know the ear you heard? You know, it's just some of the things that we say. I don't say it. I'm just saying we, as in general, men of God. Some of the things we say just to, to make the place look, you know, sad. He said, and I stepped out of my room. And I stepped into your father's compound. And I moved to my right. I moved to my right. And I tell, what is this? And I go front. And I see a door. Now, actually, he's seen all those things. But he's not moving around like that. Is he not on this stage? <laughs> but you know, if you don't do it like that, it will not look so much. You don't look again. Imagine I just come and say, well, um, God is saying, you know, in your father's house, there is this, this, and that. So God is saying, he's going to change it. You, you will not feel. But if I just start, and I woke up in the spirit. And I walked into your father's compound. And I see Ezimo. Ezimo. You know those drives? I, I I've done it before, so I can do it very well. Ezimo. The person will say, Yes, I'm from Ezimo. You're not smiling. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know, say, Should I pro? <laughs> so I leave this matter. My point is, I'm not saying if that's what they want to do, it's fine. That's, you see that thing they're doing? It's stage drama. It's fine. I usually to encourage people's faith. That is not how God speaks to them, even in their personal life. That's not how. Because they're going to be, what I'm saying, I'm not saying it is wrong. It is their own whatever. It's fine. But that, if you now think that when God wants to talk to them, that's how we do. That's not, that's not true. He speaks to them normally, that, through their spirit, man. Are you following me? It's just that when you're a prophet, when you are called of a prophet, there is this natural thing about having more spectacular happenings than others. I will explain that later, not today. It's not because you pray, you pray more. It's just because there is a call of God like that. There are, more, there, is a, there are people that are called, because of their calling, they are more prone to visions. They are more prone to those things. It's just called call upon their life. But then, that is not how God leads them every day. But Ike was a prophet. But every time he wanted to close a big deal, he doesn't look for visions. He hears from his own witness. And that takes me to addressing one or two things. I want you to know that God lives in you. He is in you. And so, because he is in you, his voice is in. Where does God live? In your heart. God does not live on the outside. So if he's going to talk to you, he's going to talk to you on the inside because he lives on your inside. I feel what I'm talking about. He does. Galatians 4 verse 6. Yeah, Galatians 4 verse 6. Let me show you something. Just He says, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart. So where does the spirit of God live? He lives in your heart. So when you are going to hear God, you will not hear him from heaven. You will hear him from within. Because that's where he stays. He has sent the spirit of God into your heart, whereby we cry, or crying, Abba, Father. Verse 7. Verse 7. Wherefore, thou art no man's servant, but a son. So, because you are a son, God's spirit is in your heart. God is in your heart. So, you shouldn't expect him to speak to you from the outside. He will speak from the inside. First Corinthians 6, 17 makes it very clear. He said, whosoever is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So if you are one with the, with the Spirit of God, he's not going to talk from the outside. He's going to talk from, his, from the inside. Are you still in church this morning? Yes, sir. So that simplifies hearing from God for you. So I'll just give you four or five ways God speaks to us. It's the same thing, but just, just flow. First, the common one by his word. The word of God is one of the biggest, the biggest ways God speaks to you. I mean the word of God in the Bible. The Bible tells us, Psalm 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and the light onto my path. That's so. The easiest way God will speak to you is through His Word. There are, I've said this all the time, many letters. I'm going to say it again. There are many things that you want to guess God, God, get God's guidance on. Look at His Word. His Word already has divine guidance, as in clear guidance. He will not lead you outside that Word. Are you following me? That's some things I tell people. Sometimes people come to this church, it happens all the time. Even throughout this December, I have to deal with that a lot. People come and tell me, oh, sir, the Lord said I should just leave my church where I'm worshiping and come and join you in this church. And I say, okay, well, and some of them are committed there. I say, pray. After praying, they say, the Lord said I should join you. So I'm coming next Sunday. I say, that's not going to work. Now, watch this. I say, you have to go back to that church and talk to the pastor and convince the pastor and wait for the pastor to basically release you. That is what God wants you to do. How do I know that's what God wants him to do? Simply because the word of God is clear on how God acts. God is a God of order. He doesn't break protocol. I've seen that in the Bible. I don't need to start asking God, should I just let him come like that? I know God will not let him come like that. Please follow me this morning. When you look at God's word, you can tell what God will do, what God wants you to do. I always give this example when it comes to marriage. Somebody is in your life or you are in somebody's life. And then the person is not a, you are trying to be serious with God. The person is not a serious Christian. Or he's not even a believer at all. Or he doesn't really care about God's thoughts like that. And you are trying to investigate, is it God's will? Stop praying. The answer is very clear. It's not God's will. How do you know? The word of God is so clear. Do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So sometimes we pray prayers that don't make sense because God is already speaking to you in his word. You must take God's word as a personal letter written to you. That's why this new book I'm, I'm, that was coming out, in fact, let me tell you, the book will be out this weekend, Immersion, amen? Yeah, it's a very simple book, just a very short book. And it's titled Letters to My Heart. Amen. Now let me tell you what, the, what makes the difference in that book. And that's you see what I'm saying. The book is written in the first person pronoun. So I did not write the book like you are righteous. When you read it, you are going to read, I am righteous. Because you must learn to take God's word as personal. When the Bible says, For he made him to be seen, who knew no sin? That one might be made righteous for Christ Jesus. Don't just read it like that. For he made Jesus to be seen. Who knew no sin that Henry might be made? God is talking to you in his word. When he says, Do not be a with unbeliever, it's a personal instruction to you. It's not just written to us, it is written to you. And so when you open God's word, you are seeing God's leading. And I tell you, by God's word, I have had to survive a lot of, I have had to know what God wants me to do many times. I've seen wrong, I've done some things in ministry over time, and just by studying God's word, I just see, wow, you have been wrong. And I stopped. That was God talking to me. I didn't need to hear it in my spirit. If it is in the word, then it is correct. Please follow me this morning. You say, wow, you've been wrong. That's not how you should have done it. I say, oh Lord, I repent. You talk. So God's voice is his word. God's leading is in his word. You want to know what God wants you to do? Know God's word. That's why you have to study it a lot. A lot. Amen. So I want to get married this year. The first part of the lead you need to sort out is to know God's word. What did the word of God even say about marriage? What did he say? <laughs> Does the word of God allow you to be playing with people's hearts? Does it allow you to just meet anybody from anywhere and carry the person? There are clear things you find in the world. Do not be unequally yoked to an unbeliever. Isaac was about to get married. Abraham told, said, make sure you marry for my son. A wife that is within my kindred. That's a lot of instruction right there. 
The Bible talking about the widowed woman. He said, if a woman is widowed, she is at liberty to marry whosoever she wills. That's First Corinthians 7. Only in the Lord. So you can choose who you want, but it must be in the Lord. In the Lord. Me imagine it. So some things are quite clear. Then you bring one girl you don't know from somewhere, and you bring the pastor, you, start, you, start, you want to hear what I will say. I will tell you what you want to hear. That's the point. You know, there are people that don't want to be led. There are people that don't want to be instructed. So when they are coming to you, they don't want you to tell them what to do. They want you to approve what they've done. I will approve it. It's body language. I don't get the point. Somebody just comes in, that see who I'm going to marry. I say, wow. Congrats. When is the wedding day? Nah, that's what I'm going to do. But if you really want to be led, some, some prayer points are not necessary. So you have a guy, the guy says he's, he's born again. How do you know he's born again? Hmm. I know because he has been, I preached to him, he said he believes. Well, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, he believes. Does he know he has, he's born again? No, he himself, maybe you know because you understand how this thing works. He himself, does he know he's born again? So he lives carelessly. Does he go to church? Ah, sometimes. Is he committed in church? He's not really the church type. Does he have a pastor? No. I don't even say this to you by God's word. The, one of the wrong, nothing like wrong guests, but let's, let's use it, amen? One of the wrong guests people to marry. You see, anybody that nobody can correct, there is no voice of authority over his or her life. Run away from the person. The day he will start beating you, nobody can stop him. When you walk out of the marriage, nobody can stop him. When he starts cheating, nobody can stop him. When he ignores his family and refuses to take care of them, nobody can stop him. I can, I can tell the point. Who is the voice of authority over your life? Some people don't have. So nobody can tell me what to do. And sometimes you ladies, when they say nobody can tell me what to do, you tell them, then you can't tell me what to do. I don't get the point. If nobody can tell you what to do, then you cannot tell me what to do. Why do you want to lead me where you cannot be led? Are you following me this morning? The word of God is clear on some things. What did the Bible say in 521? Submitting yourselves one to another. Hebrews 17, obey your spiritual leaders and submit yourselves to them. But the guy doesn't want to do that. So some things are very clear as far as God's word is concerned. And you need to know you can't improve on God's word. You just have to accept it. You can't modify it. You can't paint it. I was telling some people, somebody is trying to do a study on, on fornication. I was telling you guys here, that today is study on fornication. That, uh, that is just, that's not really what it means. And there's another Greek word. I say, see here, eh? when you are done, the word of God is still the word of God. One says, Rema. The other one say, how did, how did, um, I'm telling you a real life story. How did Adam and Eve get married? Adam just saw Eve and say, this is just now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And they began to have sex. So if I just see you and say, this is not bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, we can just move on. You know, you can make the Bible say anything you want it to say. So when they get finished talking to me, I said, go and ask him, how many people has he told, you are now bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh? Go and ask him anything. You might be number 12. The twelfth bone. <laughs> you might be the twelfth bone. The thirteenth flesh. You, know, you can't twist God's word to suit you. It is just there for you to obey it. Where you find that you are not obeying it, what do you do? You repent. You see, God's word will not adjust to you. There are some things I read from the Bible and it hits me and say, now wow. But after the now wow, what do you do? You are just. But that's why it's God's word. Amen. That is a lot. Cohabiting can never be right. You don't like it, but it's God's word. So before I begin, Father, do you want me to move into his house? No. What I pray for? How 
what's the answer? N O. So how do you know? Check the Bible. Amen. So God's word first. The second way God speaks, I'm just trying to show you the easiest way, the simplest way, is what we call, I teach on this all the time, the inward witness. Now, you know, on the first night, I was talking about the revelation of the man we did. Do you remember? You see what this is? There is an inward man. You know, I explained that very well that night. There is a man inside of you. This is not you. The real you is inside. That, in, that inward man has a witness. You, we got that word from Romans 8 16. Put it up. Let me show you. Can you power this a little? I'm stretching it again. Romans 8 16. He said, The Spirit itself beareth witness. That's how I came, up, came across, came, came about with that word. The Spirit beareth witness with our spirit. So inside of you, this spirit, notice the words, the spirit, that's God's spirit. You see, the James guys even tried, they put it in capital letter. Beareth witness with our spirit. You see, they put it in small letter. Do you understand? So, the, just, you know why this is very, don't use this capital and small letter thing always in Bible study. It can be wrong. Because actually, in the Greek, the word there is pneuma. Pneuma. Do you understand? So, don't always use it. But then, it works here. So, the Spirit bears witness of our spirits that we are children of God. So, there is a witness of the Spirit in your heart. That's how God speaks to you. Let me tell you what the word witness is. The word witness is not necessarily a voice. It's not God saying go or stop. I'll come to voice shortly. The inward witness is a reaction. That's how I'm going to explain it. From your spirit. When something is happening, your spirit is going to react to it. I didn't say your mind. Because somebody asked me, how am I sure? I'm, I'm coming to that. Just follow me gradually. Your spirit is going to react to something. If something is happening on the outside, your spirit is going to react to it in a way. That thing is God's leading. Look at Proverbs 20, verse 27. It, talks, it tells us about the spirit of the Lord. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man being the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So the spirit of man, is it, it will always respond. Something is happening on the outside, it will respond. Let me show one or two examples in the Bible. In Acts 17, verse 16, let's use Paul. We're going to use Paul just a little now. Acts 17, verse 16, something was happening. See, why Paul waited for them at Athens? His spirit was teared within him. When he saw the whole city, so the man saw something on the house. What did he see? The whole city giving to idolatry. His spirit was teared. Of course, what followed next? He began to preach. How did he know he should preach? His spirit responded to what he saw on the outside. Are you following me? Now, that's not your mind. Have you ever been in a situation where something happened on the outside? Everybody thinks you should go for it. It makes sense even to your mind. But when you check your spirit, man, it's like there's a red light. Red light. Have you ever seen that kind of thing? Red. Stay away. How do you know how do I if I check my spirit, man? Let me give you a simple way for some of that are just starters. There is something happening. And it looks so good. But then you go to pray about it. Every time you pray about it, you find, you feel, the way Brother Eggie will explain it, he says, it's like, it feels like washing your feet with your socks on. It feels strange. Do you understand? That, that kind of, it doesn't just feel right. Or sometimes everybody saying, this is not good. But you pray and then your spirit man, it's not like your head go or stop. But you just find that comfort, that peace. Now, I, I'm careful with the word peace. Because people say, how do I know what it is? Peace, peace. It's peace, actually. But I'm not talking about the peace that comes to your mind. I'm talking about a peace that wells from your spirit, man. Yeah, every other thing on the outside might not be saying the same thing, but you just find that peace within where you pray. That's your spirit reacting. So in this case, Paul's spirit was teared. Look at chapter 18, verse 5. We should see another example. So your spirit was, was teared. Silas and Timothy. We are come from Macedonia. Paul was was what? Pressed in the spirit. Stand on a word like that. Pressed. So it wasn't like he had something. But this thing we call burden. What's happened to you? You just feel, have you ever woken up some nights and for no reason, you just find this heavy burden to pray? That's your spirit. You don't need to hear my song, my song. Stand up and pray. That's God talking to you. 
It's all about prayer. Sometimes you can just be in a place and you find this press in your spirit. It has happened many times. I can just be inside. I was inside. I've shared this story many, many times with you. I was inside a, a, a chapel many years ago. I'm just sitting there and I found this pressing in my spirit. I didn't hear any voice. But I just felt in my spirit, you have to walk outside now. Does it happen to you? Now, not in your mind. You just find there is no reason why you should go outside. But just walk outside now. So well, I, I just stood up and I walked outside. Paced around, paced around, went around, went around. I didn't see anything. I came back. Sat back. That pressing came again. Just walk outside. Go outside. And I stood up again after some hesitation. And of course, by the time I got behind there, I see a young lady there. I was crying. And a lot of things. I've told you, it was a very big deliverance case. Because she was being tormented by some horrible demonic spirits. Have I shared that story with you here? The spirits, where something will appear to her and tell her, go and take money there. Tell you, she will go open the person's box, take the money, and hand over the money to them. And they, they, they will go with the money. So she steals the money. She will confess that she stole the money. Yet she did not use the money, and she can't find the money. And so by that time, she has stolen again. She has confessed again that she stole the money. They were beating, they've beating, it was a hostile environment. They were beating black, black. Come over, her, you know. So she told me. She said, I don't know if you believe me. Because nobody does. I said, I believe you. God told me to come out here. Now when she heard God told me, she would have thought maybe I was inside and God said to me, son, stand up. When you walk outside, look to the left and the right. You will see a young... Oh, I didn't hear that. But I found that pressing in my spirit. Just step outside. I came out first. I didn't see anything. I went back and said, go outside again. I follow me, church. So you need to understand when we're talking about the word witness it, it, it's not always like there is a voice you will see Paul say it I think that's the next chapter I think that's Acts is it 19 or so no, it's the same Acts 18 when the Bible will say they wanted to go that's the previous chapter chapter 16 verse 6 they wanted to go to so-so place but the spirit forbade them now they didn't hear the Bible didn't tell us that they they heard the Lord say, don't go. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost. So, they wanted, now, in this case, they were even going to preach. You will need this a lot in evangelism. Where you want to enter a place, and for some reason, God is saying, you can't talk to that. Have you ever, has that ever happened to you? Where, on the natural, you are seeing a person, you feel, is this one that will respond more? But your spirit man is leading you to this one. Has that ever happened to you? So they wanted to go to Phrygia. Or say, they wanted to preach in Asia. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost they, don't pray. They, they, they just felt that red light. That red light. So can God stop somebody from preaching? I'm, I was saying that shortly. They just felt that red light. Don't preach here. Verse 7. They were come to Misha. They said, okay, fine. Since we are going to come preach here, let's go to Bithynia. The spirit suffered them. The spirit did not allow them. So we are not told that they heard a voice. They just felt this is not time. That feeling is only in your mind. I'm talking about your spirit. Where you just feel you want to do something and your spirit responds to it. And of course, by the time they got to verse 8, they now had a vision. Come over to Macedonia and help us. There was a vision. So if you find God spoke them through a vision, but before that, he already spoke to them through the word witness. Don't do this on this. Not by saying, but it was impressed in their heart. They just felt. So you want something that is a green light. Go. Do you know the amazing thing? Because somebody is asking me, uh, somebody can wake up tomorrow and now say, Sir, I did not preach because God did not allow me to preach. No. When, God, when you want to preach and God says, Don't do that here, it's because there is somewhere else he wants you to do it. And it's because it's not yet time. Because you notice, God told them, don't preach here now. For now, be in Macedonia. By Acts 19, they had gotten the release in their hearts to go into Asia. They now went to Ephesus. So by 20, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Do you understand the point? So it's not like God said, don't go to Asia at all. He said, for now. And when you go when God says you should go, you will have the victory. 
And so look out for that red light. Look out for that green light in your heart. Be conscious of it. I learned this from Brother Hagin. He's one of the major guys I learned leading on the spirit from. He said, any project you bring to him, he said, he said, since I learned this, I have never lost any business deal. And I'm trusting that that will be your testimony too. He said, why? Because before he makes any move, he will check that spirit man. If he's very confused, if he's a bit confused about what it is saying, he will tell you, go, come back tomorrow. Let me pray. In that prayer, it's not like he's asking, Father, should I go? Sometimes it's not necessary. Just pray. Spend time in the place of prayer. In that prayer, you just pray, pray, pray. You will find what you must do. You just feel, you just have this awkward feeling. Now, sometimes when some of you come to my office to ask me about something, I already know you shouldn't do it. Not all the time, sometimes. Because sometimes the fact that you are coming to ask me is because even in your own heart, you are feeling uncomfortable about it. Does it happen to you? You just really feel like, let me just go ask pastor. So sometimes when you just come, I already know well, tell him to slow down. Because sometimes why you are coming is, there's already that uncomfortable feeling within. So you are just coming to ask to know if you can bypass the process. Or to know if it is your mind. Are you following me? So that is the inward witness. This is the best way God speaks to his children. And the problem it has or the challenge people have with it is it is too simple. It's too simple. It's not dynamic. It's not spectacular. That's how we make decisions here in church. Amen. I can just want to do something and sometimes we, we want to do something I just feel that discomfort, that red light. Don't do that. And I'm going to stop it. And I trust my inward witness more than the best experts. I want to put my money somewhere and I find that red light. I'm not going to put my money there. No matter what it is, I won't put my money there. I won't. No matter what you are showing, I'm going to pay. Calculate, I will not put my money there. That my inward spirit, inward man, is more accurate than you. He says, what if I don't put my money there later the coin? The, the business does well. It's fine. Because the thing about following divine leading is this. You really don't know what will happen if you don't follow. Are you getting me? That's the truth. And if you follow, if you, if you follow, you don't know what will happen if you don't follow. And if you do not follow, you don't know what will happen if you have followed. Let me, and I, used to, I used to share that story with you all the time, and I used to teach this very well. How I was, I got to Garrick, I wanted to enter a bus many years ago. Remember that story? And the Lord said, Don't enter this bus, enter that bus. It was my inward witness. I just felt that red flag about don't enter. I was already in the bus. The bus was loading. They were paying. I just felt that red flag. Don't. And I left. Angrily, though, because I was not happy that God was trying to do this this night. And finally, I got into the next bus, and then I met a girl, I ministered to her. She was, a lot of things happened to her. She was, she was already supposed to die the next day. According to what the witch doctor told her. Now, look at that story. At first, when I had that leading to get up from that bus, I felt, well, who knows, maybe this car would, have, would, have, would be involved in an accident, maybe it would be robbed. If I had disobeyed that voice and followed that car, there would be no robbery. There would be no accident. Are you following me? And then I'll get to where I'm going and I'll say, so why was God even trying to let me, make me come down in the first place? Where there is even an accident. There is nothing even went wrong. But then, I, would have, I might have ended up destroying somebody's life somewhere. You don't know what will happen when you don't follow. God is wiser than you. That's why I did that song when I was starting. That evil song, You are higher than our minds. We can make our own plans in our own wisdom, but God is higher than our mind. So when he just puts that red flag there, so don't go there. Some of you have experienced this a lot in relationship. You meet somebody, everything just looks perfect. But there is that red flag. Boom. Does it happen to you? Sometimes it's not even about romantic relationship. Sometimes you meet someone. The guy is not looking, but then you just find that peace rolling with him. You just flowing. 
Of course, you, it's not like you should date him or something, but just find, you can just talk. Three weeks, one month after, the guy is born again. He's growing spiritually. Your job is done. Sometimes, God leads us with the inwardness. Another way God leads us through our inward man is what I call the inward voice. There is a voice that speaks to you on the inside. Not your left ear or your right ear. And I will teach you shortly how to recognize that voice. You know, I think it's Romans, no, Acts 8.29. Acts 8.29. Philip had that voice. He got to a place. The Spirit said unto him, Go near. Now, this wasn't inward witness now. The Bible did not tell us he was pressed in his spirit to go close. If that was it, he was still divine leading. But in this case, that was the inward voice. The Spirit said, even though the word of the Spirit said, go near and join yourself. Are you still in church this morning? Yes, sir. Are you still in church? Yes, sir. I told you this year I'm going to teach you a lot, Abby. Yes, sir. It's a year of light, year of revelation. We are even still coming. One of the things I will do for you this year, there will be many expository teachings and there will be many. I will do some personality studies. There are some months we will study Abraham. There are some months we are going to study David. Amen? So this year, you will learn. But we will be better for it. The Spirit said, go near, join yourself. Go near, join yourself. So there was a voice. Let me tell you simplest, the simplest way to recognize this voice. I had it from my pastor and it was the simplest explanation to it. When you are praying, the when there is a leading thought, you are praying, and that, because that's the only way you can understand it. You are praying about something, and there is this leading thought that keeps reoccurring again and again. Pay attention to it and begin to pray in that direction. Does it happen to you? Father, what business should I start? 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, and suddenly something comes up in your spirit. And they are trying to, you know, your mind is there. It keeps rising. That's the voice of the Spirit. That leading thought. Pay attention to it. It has helped me. In fact, what I'm sharing with you is how, and I'm calling it thoughts because that's how you will understand it. But it's not, it's not actually thoughts. It's the voice of your Spirit. But let's call it thoughts. I can just be ministering here and it just gets impressed in my heart strongly. I just begin to these thoughts begin to rise. I'm trying to, I'm even teaching on maybe conduct or teaching on the gospel. And then I'm just, it's just rising again and again in my heart. That leading thought, someone is suffering here. Someone is suffering a particular case of whatever. It's just rising in my heart. That is God. I know. I've mastered this. Once it begins to rise, I don't even need to give. I don't even know that is God. Hallelujah. We love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. How we love your name. Sing it. How we love your name. Let me hear you sing it all about this, please. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. How we love your name. Sing it now. How we love your name. Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love. Just ministering now, just I was talking about the leading thoughts now. This song began to rise in my heart. Does it not happen to you? Don't you wake up some morning and there is this particular song that is rising? Don't just put it to your on your mouth, in your mouth. Sometimes God is, is trying to show you something. 
thought that he's trying to talk to you. It's like, I mean, see, those, sometimes the song that comes to me, it has nothing to do with what I'm teaching of. How you will now know it is God is after the meeting. Somebody now said, when you sang that song, there was a growth by my side. It just got off. God wanted to heal someone right there. So you, see, you don't you don't reason God with your head. Are you following me? You don't reason with your head. I use what I'm telling you. I use it in my in everything I do. That thought just begins to rise. How do I know I should write a book? Just praying in the Holy Ghost last December. Just and the Lord said, first correction, you've not been paying attention. I've been trying to get you to do this. You've not been seeing it. So, so you are hearing God. Yes. You know, I know it. It was to you, it was a thought coming. I said, okay, God, what is it? He said, there's a book that you are meant that's meant to be out this January. What is it about? He didn't tell me purely clearly. Just put some topics in my heart. Some I just wrote down, wrote down, wrote down, wrote down, wrote down. Start working. It was not until even last week that I knew what the name of the book should be. But just the thoughts that arose in my heart strongly. I was just began, just began to print them down. Take it to your business. Take it to your career. Something is happening. You just pray in the Holy Ghost. You just feel that thought rising. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. Pay. How do people write songs? That is it. Some of you that write songs, do you just sit down and then you begin to hear in your left ear? I found strength in the word of the... You know right? Does it happen to you? Does it happen like that? It can happen, but it rarely does happen. It has happened to me sometimes. Maybe I could just be in, the, in a, I, could, I could be in my dream and I will sing out a song and I wake up and I write it. But that really happens. What happens is that you're just praying. You just sometimes it first start by sensing that there is a song. You don't even know what it is yet. Come, does it happen to you? There's a song. And then you just pray in the Holy Ghost and the thought begins to there's a leading thought that just comes. There's this thought that just uh, you, you, suddenly you just know that this song is about healing. Or is about life. That thought. Then the knowledge of scriptures now come to play immediately. Those scriptures begin to pop up in your heart. That's how it works. So it's not a strange thing that God talks to us. I get to the point. When you are praying, pay attention to the leading thought. That not when you pray for two minutes, when you are really praying. Pay attention to that, that leading thought that just keeps rising. Who has ever established a business like this? It doesn't fail. Get into anything, it doesn't fail. When you, you begin to struggle, get back to the place of prayer. Pay attention, that thought begins to come again. What am I not doing right? What am I not doing right? Sometimes nothing. Continue. I'll make it right. And I just feel like saying to somebody, I'll make it right. That which the Lord led you to do. And you've been doing it faithfully. And it looks like it's not working. Don't change. Don't shift. Stay there. He's saying, I will make it right. Soon enough. Soon enough. How do you know that's what God said? I'm still teaching you. The leading thoughts. is rising. And as you grow, you will learn that it never fails. Because when, once you give it, it begins to work. It begins to work. I shared with you guys, that was... I think that first night, we went to pray for my uncle. Just got there some years ago. Just finished praying. The man was bedridden. He, could, he was like, he was, he was just like rag. I didn't know he was having different things. They say, Zillow is this. He was slim. He was having constant hiccup. He couldn't move his lip. And I just came. I prayed a simple prayer. And I told him, sit up. He sat up. Mind blowing stuff began to happen. And after I say, Oh, my family, oh, thank God, thank God. Ah, she like a local. Stepping out of the door, that thought rose in my heart. And I turned and I said, Do you people want to take him to the village? They say, Ah, no, a village. But I said, Because if you take him there, he will die. But you know, a prophet is not with, is without honor in his house. 
I was just a small school boy. I was in just in not just sorry, second year. Talking to my big uncle, said, take him there, he will die. I went. The next day he died. They carried him to the village. The day they got there, he died. Uh, so how are you, how, and, you know, how are you sure that was gonna happen? Why did he think God had killed him because they disobeyed him? No. God sees ahead of the devil. Who knows? That might be a diabolic case. That the person manipulating the whole thing is in that village. And then you brought him as a eh. Because I told them not to take him to the village, even if it is money. Because the problem was they feel we are here in the hospital spending money on this man. Let's just collect drugs and take him to the village. Because I said, don't take him there. He arrived there that day. He died. Now, am I saying that whenever you are sick, don't ever go to the village? No. But when that thought came, I knew it was on my mind. I wasn't figuring things out. It was just a leading thought by the spirit. I said, don't do this. This guy is going to die. Let me tell you something. When God speaks, pay attention to what he says and not what the experts say. When there is no direct leading from God, listen to the experts. Do you know what I said? You have to draw the line very well. When there is no direct leading from God, maybe somebody is sick. There is no direct leading from God. Just be praying and take him to the hospital. Take him take his medications. I don't get the point. When there is no direct leading, just be praying, trusting God, ministering, healing. Follow. But when that leading, that voice, once you get clearly that is what God says to do, pay attention to it. That's what they didn't understand. They were on the sea. Paul told them, don't leave this place. Because everything is going to be destroyed if you leave. They disobeyed him and they left. And by the time everything, the wave became, became so strong, they were throwing their things away. Paul stood up again and said, Sars, you know what that scripture? You should have listened to me and not left from Troas. I warned you. Well, however, there is no problem. For last night, I'm going to come to this next week on Thursday. The angel of the Lord, who I am and whose I am, stood by me and told me, that you will surely stand before Caesar. And more so, I have given you the life of everyone that is with you on this ship. That's leading. So, you guys, you eat and relax. Nothing will go wrong. That time, they now have to listen. Sit for a moment. Let me just take a, a, just a little moment. Just about 20, 20 more minutes. Do you have it? Even if you don't, I will give you. Put in what voice. That's what Isaiah was explaining in Isaiah 30 21 when he said, You will hear a voice behind you. When he said behind you, that was how Isaiah could explain it because it was in the Old Testament. If Paul was to write it, Paul will say, You will hear a voice within you. Are you following me? Because now the Spirit lives within. So you will hear a voice within you that will say unto you, this is the way walk in it. So, and it comes as thoughts. Can I hear God with my physical ear? Yes, I may touch that on Thursday if God allows me. But let us, I want to do more on visions, but then I may touch it. I'll touch that, I'll touch visions, I'll touch visions, I'll touch dreams. Thursday. Don't miss Thursday. That's what I'm trying to say. So you will hear a voice within. So once you start praying, that is a, it will just begin to rise like a normal talk. Sometimes it can be crazy. But follow it. Pay attention to it. If you are not sure, stay more in prayer. It's better to be slower than God than to be faster than Him. Don't you think so? At least if you are following Him behind, you are still seeing Him. But the Hebrews will always say, No, 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 you go wrong, tire. That's what it means. Okay, well, that's pigeon English. 
Let's try it in, in English language. If you are faster than your God, eh? you go run tired. That's all. <laughs> go run tired. So, don't be fast. Don't be faster than God. Even if you are not sure, just pay attention. Let me tell you. It is not delay. If the delay is spent trying to be sure it is God, it's not delay. I don't know who needs to hear this. That's why if you are close to me, it's, a, it's my national anthem. You cannot rush me. I hope you know. I'm that big. You can't rush me. If, if, if I'm not yet set to do something, if you like call me 2,000 times, I'm not gonna, I'll post you. Until I find that relaxation in my heart. And once I know God is leading me and I do it, I don't ever regret it. it, it I will decide, I can't regret it. Now people, people come to beg for money. All these people, all these three people that pass, try to beg, you know them now. Once they see a church, they come in. You know, the ministers can tell you, we see a lot. Sometimes after service, they just come behind and say, I'm passing through a lot. My great grandfather died two years ago. Do you know why my father died? They leave this matter. Sometimes when they come, you know, you just you think is that story you are telling that I'm listening to. No, I'm, as long as I'm not hearing what they're saying, I'm just checking my spirit man. I'm just checking my word with a check my word man. As long as watching the Holy Ghost, you can finish talking. I'll say just go, nothing for you. Leadings. One came to my pastor's church some years ago and said that he was in prison. For how many years and this that that, that happened and he belonged to a court long story end point is that he now repented from the kingdom of darkness and the in that kingdom a big god now appeared to him in a dream and told him that this church is the main church and this is the church that that people need to join that this church will lead people to heaven you know when you are mature with god you're not excited at things like that I don't say, ah, our church. You see, even, even the witch is confirming it. If I didn't even meet Reverend, he, he, he met the assistant pastors and some of the workers there and convinced them. They now went and started talking to Reverend. Reverend said, ignore that guy. I don't want to see him. Tell him to go. You know, my dad is a very straightforward person. You know, there's no, tell him to, I don't, I'm not going to see him. The way you guys see me like that, I, that's the way I'm learning it. I'm learning from. I don't want to see him. Some of you have come now. Just um, that is somebody sitting outside. Once you finish talking, I say, see, tell Pastor Kesa Pastor Mara to dismiss him. You should go home. I won't see him. Well, sometimes you need to let. Do you know they dismissed that guy? About one month after that, they began to hear his story. He had gone to another church, convinced them, told them the same story. The pastor bought it. He joined the church. About one or two weeks after that, duped some members of the church and ran away. Do you understand? Lead his Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's not always what it looks like on the outside. I'm not an excited person. You can't easily excite me. Some of you know that is you want to pay for a property. And if you don't pay now, if you don't pay now, they're going to. They should know another person should take it. I'm not really moved by such things. Someone else should take it. If I don't have a relax, if I'm not settled, that's why you pay for a property, you pack in the first day are wondering. Why did I ever pay for this place? You can't rush me. All this. In fact, in fact, if you want to delay it more, tell me that somebody is about to pay now. You, you can't put that pressure on me because I want to hear what God says. Unless as you are talking, God is saying, yeah, do it. But when God is sounding like he's silent, I'm silent too. I have no words for you. I'm going to pray. And get clearly. When there are cobwebs, like confusions in my... I'm going to wait to be sure that it is God. I won't guess. Let me say this year. This year, I will not guess. I will be sure. So that is the inward voice. That is another thing we call the inward perception. This one is still like the other ones. Where you just perceive people, Abba, 
and I go and I should talk about it because it's going to help many of you this year. Where you perceive people, you perceive things, you perceive. Uh, you know, I just next week I'm going. Uh, sorry, on Thursday I'll talk about the of spirits and all that. But this about human perception. Well, I'm just in a place, just see someone, and the, the, guy, the guy has not done anything. The person has not done anything, but then you just perceive something about the person. Does it happen to you? I see people sometimes they've not acted, but now this guy has a strange spirit. Has a strange spirit. Has a strange spirit. I may not know what it is, but that same way I perceive the call of God upon people. Like I meet someone, and sometimes person is living careless. Like I just perceive in my heart, ah, this one, <laughs> this is God's servant. He doesn't know. You know, in in. In I think is that Acts 20, Acts 8, verse 23. I already showed you, we've taught from that Acts 8 this morning earlier. In verse 29, I showed you how that Philip heard a voice. That was the inward voice. In verse 23, this was how Peter. Let me tell you a short background story of this Peter's case. There was a man called Simon. Simon, you know him? Simon Bar Jesus. So he was a big magician. You will see where well this play a role. I'm going to tell you something about this man today. His real name is Simon Marcus. When I'm done with this teaching, you can go and browse with Simon Marcus. But I'll tell you who he is. So he was just a magician in town. And Philip came and began to, he had followership. So Philip began to walk miracles and began to teach God's word. People began to get saved and began to listen to Philip, and then he lost his followership. And then he believed too. He said, oh, Philip, I believe you. I'm going to follow you. So the Bible said he was following Philip and was observing the miracles he was doing. Philip himself was deceived. He felt this guy was a real guy, the real believer. Then they sent for Peter and John. So Peter and John came and they were finishing the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that by the laying of hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he said unto him, he offered them money and told them, Give me also this power that you have. That just the same way you guys will put your hands on the phone and will collapse and follow that power. Me too. I want it. I want it. So he offered them money. And of course, he was going to pray. From us, first he said, Peter said, Your money perish with him. He must ask, why, why did he tell him that? The sixth three tells us, For I perceive that thou art in the call of Peter. Peterness. What was the bitterness? The bitterness was against Philip. Philip came, took his members, took his followership. I follow you. So that was Peter. Peter said, I perceive that what is moving you is bitterness. Now that was what God did not tell you this guy is a bitterness, but that's spiritual perception. I follow you this morning. Yes, so I perceive. Let me tell you something about Samuel Marcus. To tell you that Peter was totally correct. One of the biggest heresies that the early church was, I think that was Gnosticism, Gnosticism or something. I'm not going to teach on that. Right about it. That's the biggest heresy in the church for that guys. This was the guy that spearheaded it. He left that place. That bitterness thing carried him. Twelve of his own following, he formed his own teaching. He joined the church, acted like his born again, formed his own teaching, and led countless thousands of people like astray in the early church. Right about what I'm saying. No, this is it. Simon Marcus. He was the middle guy. But he came and told Philip, I'm a man of God, I believe in your ministry. But Peter perceived that this one, this one is not God. This is not God. You can perceive people like that by the Holy Ghost. You know, like God spoke to you, but you just well, you have this perception about them. I just go out. I need to stay away from this guy. Before we do ministry, I can tell you, be careful. People have been for long in ministry. There are people that join our ministry, and I can tell you these people will soon go. I know they won't stay. Sometimes they call me so much passion. Ah! Now, I was talking to my minister yesterday, and I'm going to explain that to you guys after this meeting. We're having a meeting. That's the one I made yesterday. I told them that there's somebody that left the church last year, 
And that's one of the biggest things that happened to our church last year, and the person left. And I'm going to explain it to you guys so that you understand. No, we are not. Because some persons, they are around. Their presence is the problem. There are people that go to go from your life, and God added people to your life and remove the person. It is praise the Lord. That's some of you. When some relationships break up, start dancing in the Holy Ghost. Because you don't even know what God has done. Some people, their presence around you will stop some things from flowing. I don't know if this is what I'm saying. Someone that's around you to just compete with you. You want to get into any place, they want to enter, they want to enter too. They can go ahead of you to stop that thing. God will just gently remove them. One of the ways he's going to do it is that he's going to give you this perception. He will let you see. Look at what this guy. I'm talking about this, not suspicion. Uh, because you just perceive. So Simon Peter said, You are in the call of Peter, the double translation of this, and in the bond of iniquity, I perceive. Peter said, I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy. He was jealous of controlling the guy. How can this small boy Philip come and everybody is following him? So all the crowd I got are very happy. So Peter, give me this power. Because I noticed that. Philip is healing the sick. But this one made you the Holy Ghost. He couldn't have healing at that time. That's why he said for Peter and John. So if I can get something that Philip cannot do now, uh -uh, we will rule the man. And by perception, Peter said, no, we are the So the guy later went and formed the doctrine on his own. Gnosticism is one of the tragedies about the early church. Most of this you read first John, when read first John chapter one, when Pope John will say, if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. You know those places he was addressing that those particular guys. Because some of them say they were sinless, some of them say that some, of, some people are born without sin. When you know crazy stops. This was it. Another guy tried it with Peter, with Paul and Silas. This lady was just walking up and down following them. These are the men that God has sent to us. Every day, as they are walking, he was, she was doing publicity for them. That's why I tell you guys, not every addition is an addition. Are you church this morning? Yes, sir. She was doing publicity. Everywhere. These are the men teaching you the way of the Lord. Listen to them. She didn't say one wrong thing. She did not say one wrong thing. Everything she was saying was true. Was it not true? We are there not servants of God. We are there not showing the world of salvation. The perception of the Holy Ghost. I will not walk in darkness this year. That's what some people need to carry. Even though some of you are the point where you are about to make decisions about which marry, be careful. That same thing about when they dupe you. Because some of those guys that do you come into your life like good people presenting things that make sense. There is a perception by the Holy Ghost. When you just perceive this person, say, ah, that is something I smell, I smell a rat. They say, oh, how do you smell it? The guy looks so good. Not of what? Not his outside. That is something that just won't have me walk with this guy. Has God ever saved you through that kind of feeling? Has he? Okay, have you ever ignored that kind of feeling and got into trouble? Yes, sir. Many times. So, as they man get, get to him, these are the men. These are the men. Ah, men of God. Men of God. He was, and possibly, you know, this girl was very powerful. She was, she had the sense of divination. Packing crowd. So, as she was saying that, maybe what she was saying was even attracting crowd to Paul and Silas. So, publicity. So then he called picked it by the Holy Ghost. Told and throw out that devil. said, come out of her. The whole city went wild. <laughs> I love the Holy Ghost. I love, I love the Holy Ghost. I love, I love the fact that he can talk. He can show you. He can show you. He can show you. So many people come around me and go to just say, don't take that person serious. I said, literally like that. I said, leave that one. So people are just excited. Uh, see. So you can receive the grace of God upon you. Many of you, that's what you lack. 
That's why people that carry things for your future, they come around you and you miss them. You turn them into friends. You turn them into pals. There are people that come around you that are not meant to be your friends. They are meant to be mentors that will bless you. But because you lack the gift of perception, you're not able to see that this person is not my friend. Now, how they do this one? I get him at all. There are people that come around you just busy. This is not a friend. This is, this is a mentor. This is a blessing. When you turn a mentor into a friend, friends don't bless. Do you understand? Friends don't bless. People just come around you. Maybe you're supposed to learn from. You like perception. You like discernment. You begin to fight with them. You begin to quarrel with them. They are quarreling with your blessing. Now, who are you with your wealth? Some come around you, they come as friends. Now, not just by observing, by spiritual, by perception. You should be able to see that, well, this guy is my friend. But in this area of my career, he knows better. I can actually come down and learn a thing or two. Do you understand? But then you lack that perception. You begin to flow with him as every other guy. You are even arguing with him on the subject. He keeps quiet. And then you have big dangerous mistakes. And then you stop coming to church. I say, Pastor Henry's God does not answer prayer. Pastor Henry's God answered you by bringing a certain friend into your life. You lack discernment. You turn him to an enemy. You began to argue with him. You missed out. Some of these people in church, that's more of you guys, all of you doing creep to creep. It was just one lady that joined church. Some of you are lost. That opened the middle of your high streets. If you had lacked this, you would have said, you would have said, you a church member. There are alpha, alpha. Some things are not alpha. Some people, you pass them spiritually, they pass you some other ways. You pray and lay hands on them when you are done. They teach you some other things. After they fall and stand up, the wisdom they receive when they fell down is to teach you. And it was at that discernment. That's what that woman saw Elisha passing. I told the husband, I perceive that this is a man of God. Elisha has not prophesied. He's following me this morning. I perceive that he's a prophet. Sir, let us build a house for him. Let us start giving him food. He has not done anything. That's how tomorrow not get appointed. He, he, the man had not flowed. He was not wearing suit. He was just passing. And by the gift of perception, I just sense, I just sense in my spirit. Sweet that oh, this is the guy. This guy is a man of God. I can perceive it. And then nobody wants back. My pastor said, Husbands that have silenced their wives. You know, all he's trying to say is that I'm very close to their beds. The husband must let them listen to the wife. And that's why your husband was not marry an idiot. Just say. Amen. <laughs> so the woman said, I perceive that this is a man of God. The man says, Fine. And first, they began to give Elisha food every day he passes. Give him food. What did he say? Let's build the house for this guy. Elisha has not from my side. Just, I, could, I perceive. He didn't say, I know this man of God before I watched him on TV. He said, I just saw him and I perceive that this guy is a prophet. They began to give him food. They began to build the house for him. That every time you come, you can come here and sleep. I think that's about King's fault. Every time you come, you can come here and sleep. And then one day, I just told the answer. What do we do for this woman? She has had the need all her life. What is the need? She needed a child. She had been praying. God had come to answer the prayer. But God came in form of a man. She had to discern the man properly. And honor the man properly. For the answer to her prayer. Are you guys what I'm talking about? That's how God answers prayer. Sometimes God doesn't answer prayer by going for everything to say. He just gives you, helps you see. Do you know where she was descending that man and honoring him? She didn't know there was answer that was coming. 
learn to perceive. Look at what he said. He said, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. I just perceive, I just sense it in my Do you sense in your spirit? I just, you need to pay attention to that more of this year. You are not a carnal person, you are a spiritual person. You are not in the flesh. Romans 8 verse 9, we are not in the flesh, we are in the spirit. So pay my attention to your spirit, man. I perceive that this is a holy man of God. And then of course, in fact, because of this honor, I shall honor this man. When Elijah finally said, Elijah finally said, when Elijah called her and said, do you have any need? She said, no. Do you want me to talk to the king? I'm very connected. Should I talk to the president about you? No. Do you need anything? No. God has blessed me. By that time, why did she ask for a child? She had given up on that prayer point. But prayers are not wasted. The answer to your prayers are in the deeds in your heart. So immediately she left. Elisha told me, "Has it now? Wow! He said that it's nothing we can do." The guy said, "Don't mind how that woman. She doesn't have a child." Elisha said, "Wow! Call her back in, Madam. By this time next year." And guess her response? No, my lord. She refused. She rejected the prayer. Look at it. About this in according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace the son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. So she called Elijah a liar. That's why I told you something that first night. That there is, there is, when we get to a father son thing, we are following you well. There is a level, there is a the dimension of the prophetic we get to. Even if you don't believe it will happen. Once some spiritual laws are in place, not even that was in place here, there was honor. You can't bring a man of God, give him food, give him water, build the house for him, and he's not fulfilled in your life. It will fail. So if you don't want to say, Amen, hey, man, the man said, No. You are lying. Sorry, sir. You don't do respect, sir. And finally, she gave birth. She gave birth. The honor continued. Years after that child died. For that time, she had learned about the anointing of the man. So when the child died, she sat with her donkey and did such so women. The husband asked her, What's wrong with you? Say nothing. Is the child fine? It is well. Where are you going to help to cancel the prophet? As she rode on that donkey and got to the man's house. Honor. I know I'm talking about honor this morning. Honor is powerful. Honor takes you to the heart of a man of God. Elijah saw the same Elijah that Naaman came to see. And he told Naaman to go and bath. There was that. Elijah saw her from far and said, Don't be asking. That is the Shulamite man. Please go and ask her, is all well? And she replied, it is well. She arrived and, you know, told Elisha, I'm doing this by the Holy Ghost. I've left my teaching for the same time. I told Elisha, the child, I told you first of all that I don't want the child. You pray that I receive the child. But I'm now happy that the child has died. And the Elijah told me, as he carried the staff, I got with it on the child. And the woman said, Well, it's not like I don't believe in man of God. But he said, This way, the way he has it worked. You have to go with me too. Now, that's Elisha, the no nonsense prophet. But honor had melted his heart, finished it. Elijah, as some young men say, the bad headed, they say, Don't worry, be bad. The woman said, You will come with me. As I so leave it, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. Sorry, my other thing. Just like she predicted, he has to not do anything. Let's leave this man. You know, that man is very great with perception. She perceived Elijah. She perceived the answer to that. 
this man will not do anything. How many of you said so, though? So you said, how many of you said? So how did you say? Yes. I'm not asking you, boy. Let's go. Glory to God. I need you to say one more thing. God is sourced by perception. But one thing again, before we close, God is sourced by his prophets. But I want to say this, but I want to warn you if I feel, I want to warn you. God can speak through men. God can use me to talk to you. You find that in the Bible, in the, I want, in the book of Acts, you find a man called Adam Post that God used to prophesy a mind. So God can use men to talk to you. But you need to understand the place of men in the New Testament. In terms of prophecies, it's not like the Old Testament. Most times, prophets in the Testament, the work they do is to confirm what you have in your spirit. So, even if a prophet tells you what you've never heard in your spirit before, ensure you confirm it with your spirit before you act on it. Confirm it with your inward witness. This is not the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, they did not have the Holy Ghost living inside of them. So if I tell you that God is saying this, you don't have anything with you to check whether it is true or not. I follow you. But now you have something that you can check within your spirit. And that's the Holy Ghost. So if I walk up and then God says to the Lord, you have the Holy Ghost too. They see me say a magic. Most times when it is of God, you already receive the light. The you know, a man of God has met my friend. Now, this is not a fake prophet. This is a genuine man of God. But I'll tell you why that happened. Genuine to the core. Like genuine. When he met my friend, because he made many years ago, I prophesied to him because he saw Pastor Casey playing keyboard. I told him, I see you going into DJ, music, <laughs> sound production. Now this is Jimmy now. So when we heard that, we just kept quiet. So when we finished up, I asked him, no, 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 no. He said, I said, I've never received that in my life. I will never receive it. I, I can tell you why that happened. I'm coming to that. That's a genuine I mean, I mean, I mean, man of God. Anointed to be caught in today. So it's not like a big problem. That's why you should be able to check your spirit. 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 Why that can happen is that man, man's way, man's knowledge can come into prophecy. We have humans. He saw him playing keyboard. He didn't know him before. See, it's later when they got to know, he knew that he said was not correct. We began to see more perfectly. And that leads me to say one last thing. If God is going to lead you by prophets, always remember, if he's going to lead you, two things. One, he will, those prophets will agree with what you really have your spirit. Number two, he will lead you with known voices. God will not speak to you through strange voices. You ask me why? Because God is a father. This is what the difference in the Testament the church in Nigeria needs. Anybody can just come and just call us. No, God does his Lord. And you just take it around. If God is going to give you very serious things about your life, you will use known voices. Voices like your pastor. Voices like the method of the of your life. Let me tell you, let me tell you a simple analogy. Let me tell you an analogy. No father will use people that the child does not know to talk to the child. If your father you wants to give a reasonable permission to your child, you're not going to bring a stranger from Jaws. I said, there's something important your father wants to tell you. If the child will ask, why are you the one telling me? Where is my father in the first place? Why is he not your uncle, this person telling me? I get the point. Why is he not my mom telling me? Who are you? Kidnapper. That's who you are. But in Nigeria church, anybody can come from anywhere and tell us anything. Prophets from, from um, Kavacha. Prophet, just come and meet you and say, Lord, you see, it's called, you even call my name. You call my phone number, let me tell you. I'm not saying that wrong. But you see, when God has placed you in a house on their family, most of the things, whatever you will tell you through men, if they are very important to your destiny, 
you will tell you through that house. That's why you must be very wise. Sometimes you will tell you by prophecy, like I just speak to you by prophecy. Sometimes it's not by prophecy, sometimes it's by instruction. So the instructions I give, I give you as a pastor are more powerful than whatever forensic revelation the is going to give you. Why? I know you. I pastor you. I know your process. People have gone to trouble. A man of God does not know from anywhere. We we'll just see them. I say, ah, I see the hand of God upon you. That is an apostolic calling. Apostolic calling. It's time. It's time. It's time. He doesn't know you. He doesn't know if you just come on again two months ago. He doesn't even know your process. The guy that starts up and said, ah, I heard it. The man of God said, it's time three times. And boom, the guys have opened apostolic ministry. Makes a mess. This is a guy that possibly has a genuine calling, though, that will get expression at a certain time. But because that's not the spirit, I also know simple, simple order. Now, if God spoke to teach me about you, I can tell there's a God of God upon your life. But then I'm pastoring you. I know it's not time. I don't get the point. What this man have to do is, I will change your curriculum. I will change your diet. I will change the training I give you. Because I've seen where you are going to. I get the point. That's why God is putting through long voices. If God is going to talk to you, stop going up and down from place to place. What is this one saying? While you have the Holy Ghost, if He needs to confirm to you through men, He will use full voices. I lost three voices. Can I read the book of Acts? The man that was well known for the prophet in the book of Acts was Agabus. He was a well known prophet. He prophesied to Paul. He gave Paul a personal prophecy. We don't have time, you know, so I was going to that. Because even that personal prophecy he gave Paul. Paul did not follow it with the data. He checked his spirit. He brought Paul's kingdom and tied it. And tied his hand. And said, Thus says the Lord, the man that owns this kingdom, as he goes into Jerusalem, he's going to be bound. <laughs> and in the end, he said that this is a prophet that everybody knows. The guy has one prophesied in my mind. And it happened exactly the way he said it. And all of them began to beg Paul. Don't go. Don't go. This is also. And Paul told them, Stop crying. They are breaking my heart. He told them to keep this. Or what? The Spirit of God that already told me that not only in Jerusalem, but every city I enter, that this will happen to me. So, Agabus, you are correct. You are just confirming what I already know in my spirit. Do you understand? However, I have a reading in my heart to go to this one. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. You have seen ways he cannot see. He will make a way. One last instruction. Pay my attention to your spirit, man. How will you do that? Pray the Holy Ghost alone this year. But do I do I have my spirit? Pray the Holy Ghost some more. By that, what it means is if you've been doing 30 minutes, just add a little more. Paul said, I thank my God that I pray this spirit for you all. That is how you can be able to discern that this is my mind or this is the Holy Ghost. It's by that spirit that you perceive. Pray the Holy Ghost a lot this year. Wake up in the morning, talk in the Holy Ghost before you leave the house. When you have time, they talk in the Holy Ghost. Before you sleep at night, talk in the Holy Ghost. As you walk on the road, talk in the Holy Ghost. Make a practice of it. You won't you miss it. Your spirit becomes very, very, very alert. And you'll be able to know. God will talk to you. If he doesn't talk to you by his word, he will talk to you by your inwardness. If he doesn't talk to you like that, he will talk to you by the inward voice. If he doesn't, he will come to you by spiritual perceptions. He 
he will talk to you. He will use prophets to confirm what he has told you. The man he has said over your life, the people that over your life, he will, use he will use your local church. He will use your pastors, your ministers. He will use your mentors to confirm what he has told you. When I began to grow bolder in the prophet, the pastoral calling, I'm still growing. But when I began to get bolder, I began to do something. Initially, when I was telling all this, somebody had come and tell me, my member come and tell me that they are going to one place and what prophet say. And I started considering, uh, listen, if you come now and that is not what I'm getting for you, I will tell you very clearly that is not correct. Why? God will not ask that prophet about you, He will ask you. That's why if you are calling to the prophetic, that is a way to prophesy or into people's life, even if God talks to you over specific issues. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't get a prophetic calling and come into a church and you begin to tell people specific things about their calling, about their marriage. God wants you to marry this brother or this sister. Don't do that. Don't do it. If that is your you don't even know the brother, you don't know the sister. That is the way. So God wants to talk to you. I will take that song like three times this morning. I'll, I'll give you three minutes to pray. Because many of you, the ways that God will make for you this year is in his leading. The ways he will make for you is in his voice. Practice listening this year. Practice praying in the Holy Ghost and listening to the Holy Ghost. The secret is this. If you practice more, you get more used to it. How do children get used to their parents' voices? They keep hearing it. How do you get to that car that came in that just, that, that horn? That's my dad's car. You heard it a lot. So when you practice, you listen, you obey, you miss it, you play again, you are growing in perfection. Now we tell you, we are going to know that this is good and this is not it. Our ways are being made. Ways are being made. Let's take it like three times. I like you all on your feet. Lift your hands. It is an old song, so we all should know it. Sing it like you are singing about yourself, that God is making a way for you. Do you believe that to see? He's making away your career, he's making away your business, he's making away your ministry, he's making away your spiritual life. He will make that way. Fear what he's going to tell you. And every time there is an instruction from God. Say God will make a way.
Let me hear. I want to hear your voice.
and everyone here. I pray that this season, this year, it will be character, it will be, it will be clear. This year will be characterized with the fact that they always heard from you and that they always followed you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Listening ears, hearing ears, Amen. seeing eyes, Amen. perceptive hearts. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will see, you will hear, you will perceive, Amen. and you will follow. Amen. This year, you will be bold at the end to say, I heard from him, I followed him, I walked in the light and I didn't walk in darkness. That will be your testimony and your greatest resource this year. And by this, may ways be made for you. By this, may doors be opened unto you. In the name of Jesus. By this, may you know where to enter, where not to enter. May you be saved from danger this year. By the leading of the Spirit. You will know what to do. And by His wisdom and His leading, He will keep you safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Were you blessed this morning? Were you blessed? Yeah, it's a long morning. And that's just two hours plus learning the word. Are you happy? Yes, sir. You have to thank me now this morning. Thank Say thank you. Ain't nobody for long, just thank me. <laughs> See now my comment.